Since the Morbius trailer has flown into our lives, we thought that we'd give you guys a rundown on everything you need to know about the movie before its release early next year. From the character's origins and abilities, ties to other Marvel characters, the movie's plot, and which universe it's a part of, this is everything you need to know about Morbius, aka the Living Vampire. Now let's start with who's Morbius and what does he do? Stan Lee had long wanted to introduce a Dracula-inspired villain for Spider-Man, but was prohibited from doing so by the Comics Code Authority who banned comics from involving supernatural characters. When the ban was eventually lifted in 1970, Marvel immediately got to work on Morbius, and the character was co-created by Roy Thomas and artist Gil Kane, with Morbius making his first appearance in The Amazing Spider-Man issue 101 in October 1971. In the comics, Dr. Michael Morbius is a well-respected and renowned Nobel Prize winning biologist with a supreme intellect, but suffers from a rare debilitating blood condition which leaves him with limited mobility. To cure his illness, Morbius travels overseas where he conducts an experiment using electroshock therapy combined with the DNA of vampire bats, you know, as you do. While to some degree Morbius does cure his illness, the experiment goes awry, and Morbius becomes afflicted with an even worse condition, pseudo-vampirism, leading him to become the living vampire. The pseudo-vampirism condition does have its positives, with Morbius gaining special abilities such as the power of flight, enhanced strength, reflexes and speed, and the ability to fight longer and harder with his enemies. Also, with his DNA now enhanced with that of vampire bats, Morbius is able to use echolocation, has great night vision, and even has the power to hypnotize weak and close-minded individuals, such as, you know, people who don't like pineapple on their pizza. Seriously, what's up with hating that? It's really, really good. Morbius also has an accelerated healing factor, allowing him to recover from particular wounds, although his healing factor is limited, and cannot, for instance, regrow lost limbs or something like that. But of course, suffering from pseudo-vampirism isn't all fun and games, and Morbius is afflicted from some typical vampire setbacks, you know, such things as a reaction, and an aversion to light, although it doesn't burn him, and an insatiable thirst for blood. In fact, like a typical vampire, Morbius needs to consume blood to stay alive, and depending on when he fed last, it can affect his healing factor as well. Morbius' overall look also changes, with his face becoming more bat-like, with him gaining fangs and his nose becoming flattened, making him the literal Batman. Judging from the trailer, the Morbius movie is seemingly staying close to the source material, although Morbius was admittedly born in Greece in the comics, with the living vampire also arriving to the US by ship shortly before he met our favorite friendly neighborhood hero, that would be Spider-Man. Morbius has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Spider-Man many times since his conception, and is considered one of Spidey's main villains, but Morbius has also been the rival to other Marvel characters, such as the one and only Blade. So that's the main facts you need to know about the character of Morbius and his comic book origins, but what about the movie itself? As we mentioned, the movie is seemingly sticking pretty close to the source material, with it focusing on a similar origin story to the comic books, as well as having the same powers and traits, including echolocation, flight, and of course the need to feed on blood. Not a whole lot's been confirmed about the plot, but the movie will likely focus on Morbius as he comes to terms with his brand new condition, and his internal battle to want to help people, cause you know, he's a doctor, and the desire and need to consume blood. It's likely that Morbius will settle into more of that anti-hero role like Venom as time progresses, and, assuming it does well at the box office, could establish a series of films. The movie's cast includes the best Joker of all time, Jared Leto, and uh, yeah, I'm just kidding, can you go easy in the comments please, thanks. So Leto's Morbius, Audria Arjona as Martine Bancroft, Morbius's girlfriend and secretary, in the comics at least, Matt Smith as Loxious Crown, who is known as Hunger in the comics and will likely be the true villain of the movie, although I don't want to say why as, you know, spoilers. Tyrese Gibson is Simon Stroud, who is a former CIA agent turned NYPD detective, and it will also feature Jared Harris as a currently undenamed role, and Michael Keaton, who is reprising the role of Adrian Toomes, aka The Vulture. The movie's directed by Life and Childhood 44 director Daniel Espinoza, and it's gonna be released in theaters on the 22nd of January, 2022. But which cinematic universe does Morbius belong to exactly? Well, spoiler warning for Venom 2, 
Since Venom 2's post credit sequence, that question has become more confusing, but we can at least be certain that Morbius is in the same universe as Eddie Brock and his symbiote friend, with the Morbius trailer referencing Venom on several occasions, referring to the thing in San Francisco, and literally at one point saying, I am Venom, as a joke. But as we mentioned, with Venom 2's post credit scene creating a bridge between the Sonyverse and the MCU, Morbius could technically be part of the MCU as well. With Tombs being in Morbius, and the words murderer graffitied on the wall possibly referring to Spider-Man after he was framed for the death of Mysterio, Morbius could, well and truly, be a part of the MCU. However, going off everything that's been said by Sony and Tom Holland and Kevin Feige in the media, No Way Home is likely going to be Holland's last outing as Spider-Man in the MCU, suggesting that he will make his way to the Sony-verse instead, along with the likes of Venom, Morbius, and the upcoming Kraven movie. But, 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 perhaps the MCU and the Sony-verse could run in tandem, who knows? But Morbius could even have more connections to the other Spider-Man franchises with the Rhino on the loose headline next to the Black Cat reference being seen on the front color of the Daily Bugle, potentially meaning the return of Paul Giamatti's Rhino from The Amazing Spider-Man 2, while the Oscorp building was also spotted in the trailer, but who knows? Cinematic universes are becoming as vast and complicated as comic books themselves, but give us your best guesses down below. If Morbius is indeed a part of the MCU though, I know I would love to see him as part of the Sinister Six, just because Spider-Man doesn't have enough on his webbed hands already.